Greetings! Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. You can check that out at TheMediaSpeaks.com. Uh, stammering over myself at the beginning. You know, they've got the live feed camera, and then you have the, the, the HD camera. And for those of you that don't know, there's oftentimes two videos up with the same date. The reason for that is I've uh, the, since I've been going live on the Media Speaks, and sometimes I end up accidentally posting it on the correct views, I confess. I've been going live, and of course the, the webcam is not HD, so uh, it's just a Logitech. So that is going live, and then of course the HD for all of you that are used to that quality, that also goes up as well. So that explains all of that to you new viewers, and for those of you that have been with me for a while, do me a favor. Join my Twitter account, because I never pay any attention to it, it just languishes there. I don't know, I'm not a huge twiddler, but I don't know, I guess. I, I don't tweet, I crow. Big Brother Alert, cameras in the cable box to monitor TV viewers. This, is, this isn't great, this is the Washington Times. Um, remember Dr. Strangelove, our source was the New York Times. Um... This is a major newspaper. How many of you have heard crazy people, or at least we thought, myself included, crazy people talk ad nauseum about how our devices were going to watch us when we weren't home? Well, I mean, when we weren't home. When we weren't looking. No teleprompters here, clearly. We always thought those people were crazy, didn't we? Well, our appliances aren't going to watch us. Well, you know what? This isn't like the underground newspaper that nobody's ever heard of before. This is the Washington Times. It hardly gets more Orwellian than this. A new technology would allow cable companies to peer directly into television watchers' homes and monitor viewing habits and reactions to product advertisements. Oh, but as long as I get to see the new Beyonce video and then I know it's coming and they can judge my reaction, I don't care if they watch me. The technology would come via the cable box and at least one lawmaker on Capitol Hill is standing in opposition. I don't have cable, but you know what? Many places do. The technology would come via the cable box, and at least one law, I have thread that, Massachusetts Demo Democratic Representative Michael Cupiano, C-A-P-U-A-N-O, has introduced a bill, the We Are Watching You Act, to prohibit the technology on boxes and collection of information absent consumer permission. Oh, but us libertarians, the correct views, he never says anything good about Democrats, does he? Good job, Michael. The bill would also require, require companies that do use the data to show we are watching you messages on the screen to explain just what kinds of information is being captured and for what reasons Adweek reported. This is very, very important. What this man is doing needs to be supported to the absolute maximum. Do you know the new Xbox? Uh, there's a cartoon, I guess, up on InfoWars, and I read the article uh, about how, you know, Superman has joined the dark side, so to speak, and he's looking in your shower, and now he works for the NSA. Well, technically speaking, if it knows where you are throughout the house based on the game system, depending on exactly how your house is laid out and how, what your actual showering habits are, that's not too far from the truth. Is that Sam's big freak out? Is that really what he's worried about, that they're going to know when he's in the shower? No, really, I, I could care less. You, you know, watch if you want to. You're going to want to leave soon. My point is that, A, if, if the wrong person got their hands on this, if somebody's stalker got their hands on this, you know, they'd be able to go into somebody's house when they were in the shower. Uh, it would be nice to know when someone is at home. Let's forget about the shower for a second. Be nice to know when you weren't home. What if your camera could be hacked from your Xbox <clears throat> while you're at work? You're not home. Who knows? Who knows what phones can do? They might be able to tell if you're home when they're outside your house on the phone. 
nope, you're not. Yoop. And the smaller place you live, the worse that could be. Because if you live in a in a place with many rooms, then it's it's not as safe. But if you know that someone lives in an efficiency or a rather small unit of some kind, you could rob them blind by hacking this technology. Not to mention in ways that the government will use it. <clears throat> because I mean, it's through all of it, through all of American history. You question your government, or your government will definitely question you, and they will have the answers many times prearranged. It goes on that the technology includes cameras and microphones that are installed on DVRs or cable boxes and analyzes viewers' responses, behaviors, and statements to various ads. Getting that money and losing that privacy. Oh, but they'll probably give you free stuff if you let them do this. See how they get you? See how they get you. Poor Christelle, I know she'd sign up for it. And then provides the advertisements uh, that are targeted to the particular household. So, uh, you know, oh, it's all just to help you like the ads better. Specifically, the technology can monitor sleeping, eating, exercising, reading, and more, and we purported. Last paragraph, this may sound preposterous, but it's neither a joke nor an exaggeration, said Mr. Capano. In a statement, and we purported these DVRs would essentially observe customers as they watch television as a way to super target ads. It is an incredible invasion of privacy. And I agree. I agree. I, I live practically like a nudist when I'm by myself or just with my girlfriend. I tend to wear a t shirt. So, you know what? You know, walk around in my underwear or whatever. I don't care if people see me in my underwear. Point is, you don't have a right to do so unless I give it to you, it's America! Oh, I care less. Again, you're not going to last long. Alright, Graham proves, in fact, that he's unbelievably wrong yet again. Foxnews.com Graham says GOP block of amnesty bill would add to parties' death spiral. What this bonehead is saying is that if the Republican Party doesn't stand behind this amnesty bill that allows untold millions of Amer uh, illegal immigrants to join into American culture and to become basically citizens, if the Republicans don't stand beside this, then it's going to add to the party's already existing fall from grace. This is wrong on a couple of fronts, okay? First of all, before I get a bunch of uh, people hating me on my comment line, I do think that it should be much, much easier to get into the country legally, and I don't think that it should be based on a lot of money. You, you should not have to have a ton of money to enter the country. Uh, specifically, if you're not staying for, you know, or beyond work visas or whatever. I don't have a problem with any of that. My problem is that I don't want illegal immigrants in my country. And their host country doesn't want it either. Go into Mexico sometime. When you're done watching this video, look up what happens to you if you sneak into Mexico the way that they do here. Yeah. See how Ecuador would like it. The top Republican crafting, and for those of you that think I'm racist, I'd have the same problem if it was happening from Canadians who were whiter than me. The top Republican crafting the Senate's sweeping immigration reform legislation acknowledged Sunday that the bill still has flaws, while a fellow GOP senator said that their party blocking its passage will only add to their demographic death spiral. Florida Republican Senator Mark Rubio, the son of Cuban immigrants and potential 2016 presidential candidate, please God, no, please, that'll lead to your death spiral! said roughly 90% of the bill is in perfect shape and that the, the full chamber debates are off to a good start. No. Mr. Rubio? Mr. Graham? What is wrong with your party is you! It was proven at nauseum that Ron Paul would have beaten Barack Obama. Proven how? Because a lot of Republicans would not vote for him, but they're also not going to vote for Obama. So they're either going to vote a third party, stay home, or bite the bullet and vote for Rand. Or, excuse me, Ron. Then, 
The independents would have sworn to Ron Paul. His ability to generate votes from independents uh, was much larger than even Gary Johnson's, and everybody's still talking about how good he did, and I, I voted for him. Um, look, what's wrong with the Republican Party is that they are trying to be more like the Democrats instead of listening to the more intelligent, libertarian-leaning side of their party. They want to push all of those people out of the party. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Gary Johnson did great, so keep pushing. You, idiot Graham, are the problem with the party. Which is why I'm a libertarian. Um, check this out. Look to Libya for a guide to post-liberation Syria. Daniel McAdams Lee Rockwell blog. And do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the article that I did on Libya. Just search Sam DeGangi Media Speaks Libya. You'll find it. Um, I, I think I gave uh, Anthony Court gray hair with that article. And by the time it was done, both Court and myself could practically write a history book on Libya. Uh, at least a really fat history pamphlet. But my point is, this is something I've read a lot about. Do you know that Libya issued debt-free currency? See, I worry about saying things like this because there's a huge chunk of people that listen to Rihanna and think that that's actually talent and they can almost count to four and then here you are Debt-free money. How many of you don't know what it means? Well, I'm going to tell you. And for those of you that do, you know exactly why I'm doing this. Debt-free money is money that the government prints and is its own money, not owed out of any interest to anyone. We in America used to do that back when we were prosperous. We have gone in a nosedive since 1911, 1913, when these policies began, including the Federal Reserve and uh, Nixon taking us off the gold standard, and on and on and on and on, to now, when money is issued from the Federal Reserve, the country owes money on it interest from the moment it hits the streets. So basically what I'm telling you is Libya had a better economic system than America has. Health care was a human right in Libya. It was a human right. And you know what? They, they didn't have waiting lists. They weren't bankrupt. They didn't have euthanasia. Uh, if you needed it, you got it. That was the health code in Libya. Okay, and on and on and on and on. The man was so popular that uh, Muammar Gaddafi could ride down the street in a topless car cheering and nobody shot at him from a rooftop. I mean, presidents can't do that over here today. Um, do I have a lot of respect for a lot of things about Gaddafi? Actually, yeah, I do. And I'll be honest, there's part of him that's a scum dictator. And I'm not sad when a dictator and a tyrant gets what he's getting. However, that man did nothing to us. He had a bee's nest over there. And he had it under control. The Sunnis and the Shiites and even the Christians were all getting along. And again, why don't you move there, Sam? Why didn't you go? Any Middle Eastern nation is not a real great place to live if you are, in fact, not Islamic and Middle Eastern. And you're probably in trouble even if you're um, uh, not Middle Eastern in some countries, even if you're Islamic. Having said that, we had no right to do what we did to him. He had a good country, and we ruined it. Well, asked about the state of Libya after the U.S.-led intervention to liberate the country and bring prosperity and human rights, Professor E. Howdit, Ronan, uh, Y E H O U D I T, Ronan, R O N E N, a Libya expert at Bal Alan University in Tel Aviv, had this to say The post Gaddafi Libya is a chaotic and violent state without political stabilization, without internal security for its people, without security on its borders. Under Gaddafi, they had all that. Again, I just told you I was a libertarian in terms of my philo philosophical stance. What I'm saying is that, you know, while Gaddafi was the opposite of that in so many ways, what he did work for his people, and his people loved him. And he wasn't hacking and burning them. Ronald Reagan had to go over, and I, I'm not completely against what Reagan did when he bombed him. I'm sorry we killed his daughter, but you know what? He was, he, he was where he shouldn't have been, and doing things he shouldn't have been doing. 
Um, should we have bombed him? I don't know, but I wasn't totally against it. But you know what? Reagan left the man alone because Reagan was smart enough. Smart enough to say, hey, look at this. You don't want to take him out. Because uh, if we can calm him, he can, get, he can get this mess under control. And he did. As to runs Libya these days, after the West's favorite tyrant Gaddafi has been sodomized and murdered by NATO allies, and that is true, we funded somebody that sodomized and beheaded a corpse. I would say the armed militia, they have the last word, and the ruling institutions are helpless. Again, they had government structure, they had free health care, uh, certain factions anyway, court, had free housing, and now, what do they got? But surely, it says, NATO intervention has brought about the great economic advantages promised to the liberated people. Professor Ronan, Libya desperately needs foreign capital to recover and rehabilitate its ruined systems. Debt-free currency. Their people had a very, very high standard of living. Higher than a lot of Americans listening to this right now have. And we ruined it for them. Your tax dollars. Let Obama ruin it for them. Heck of a good job there, Obama, it says. Keep listening to the boy genius Ben Rhodes and on to Syria. It'd be funny if it, were, if it wasn't so absolutely dreadful. Guys, let me tell you where to go. At the mediaspeaks.com and click on Nitro Pack. Nitro hyphen pack. Uh, best way to get there, go to the Media Speaks, click on the Nitro Pack ad. Many people at the Media Speaks have been talking about all of the things that they have that have to do with prepping. And I am in favor of prepping in every possible way. But the correct views loves to go after people that don't normally listen to news shows. A lot of you aren't preppers, you're just campers. Am I right? Good. It's freaking summertime. I live in Ohio, the land of ice and snow. So when summer comes, there's something almost sacred about it. Camping time. Okay. The portable mini LED lantern. $5.99. Practically giving it to you. Practically giving it to you. 36 hour candle, survivor candle. $6.50. Yeah. They got tents. They've got everything you need to have one hell of a summer. And let's face it, it's going to be cold again soon enough. What you want is to actually be able to enjoy the summer and the warmth and the fun that you have while you have time to have it. So go to uh, Media Speaks, hit Nitro Pack, and uh, get yourself a tent, get yourself a lantern, hunting knife, first aid kit. Go out there, fish, and enjoy your summer. Infowars.com, sheeple waking up to NSA spying, privacy search engines booming. I'm going to finish the show with three articles that tell you how to beat the spy network. We're being spied on, like I said at the beginning, in our devices more and more. We're being spied on from the Google and the Yahoo. For those of you that by now don't know who Snowden and Prism is, Type in Snowden, S-O-L-S-N-O-W-D-E-N-P-R-I-S-M, and you'll be terrified. Google has been caught again, as has Apple, as has Microsoft, spying. It says, the NSA prison spying scandal has engulfed practically every major online company, <clears throat> and despite blanket denials of involvement from the likes of Google, Apple, Yahoo, and Microsoft, Alternative privacy-oriented internet tools have been a huge boost in traffic as web users are ditching the giants that apparently aided government snoopers. So I'm going to give you, not this whole article, you can read it if you want to. I am going to give you the information you need to get rid of Google, to get rid of Yahoo, to get rid of all these things. Um, DuckDuckGo, it says, for example, markets itself with the strap lines, stop watching us. And Google tracks you, we don't. <clears throat> and they've, uh, they've seen record traffic, it says, um, according to Search Engine Watch. I'm going to go to some other things you can get. Other tools such as CryptoCat, which encrypts chat messages before they are sent, has been downloaded double in one week, while Tor, T-O-R, 
which facilitates anonymous surfing, has seen downloads increase 20 to 30 percent. Um, what else do we got? I know Kim Commando is, <clears throat> she's one of the people that, uh, uh, Catherine Albrecht, I'm sorry, um, has helped start Start Page and Start, um, start Mail. I'm going to read a little bit about her because she's awesome if you don't know who she is. Start Page and <clears throat> IX Quick, X Quick market themselves as the only third-party certified search engines in the world that do not record your IP address or track your searches. StartPage allows users to access Google results with privacy, while <clears throat> XQuick is a meta search engine that provides private search results that do not include Google results. So those two are very good to know. You search StartPage, you get all your Google searches. Don't panic. You can give up Google without they search Google for you, and then they hide you. You understand? You, you still get your Google. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Start Mail. I mentioned that. Start Mail is just starting. It is part of Start Page. It's a private email service, so nobody gets any of that information. So go there. This is how we fight back, and this is how we ultimately win. Um, another InfoWars, tell TSA what you think about its surface mode Gestapo. <laughs> That's funny. For those of you that don't know, it's a, it's a World War II reference. To the losing side, I might add. The TSA wants to know what you think of its effort to turn thousands of transportation employees, drivers, maintenance technicians, dispatchers, station attendants, customer service employees, engineers, conductors, train men, and others into low-level Gestapo agents for the ever-expanding police state. You get the point, guys. Comments can be submitted by visiting regulations.gov and citing docket number. <clears throat> get ready. Click on uh, your, uh, your, get, yep, get your, get your little typing thing open. You got notepad, a word. You ready? TSA-2013-0005 in the search box explains GSN. So there's exactly what you do and you can tell them how much you think they're doing an abysmal job and they are eviscerating the Fourth Amendment to look for terrorists when there are more safe ways than doing it than irradiating the public. Last thing I want to get to, Prison Planet, Anthony Gucciardi, Chipotle, the first U.S. chain restaurant to label GMOs. We are winning! Again, I, I like Chipotle. Uh, every time I go there, I always have to say light rice, or I feel like I have ordered the rice burrito and there's nothing else in it. But if you tell them light rice, you'll get the best burrito you've ever had. In a display of effective consumer activism, Chipotle Mexican Grill has become the first U.S. restaurant chain to go ahead and label all GMOs so through their locations on the menu. And unlike Whole Foods and other grocers, uh, Whole Foods is a, a grocery store, who are making similar strides but are actually years away from actual implementation, Chipotle has already launched the labeling initiative into existence. Uh, originally, I guess McDonald's had it was a major investor in it, and they got out of it in 2006. And since then, they've gone from 500 locations to 1,400. Uh, there is one right up by near where I work. Chipotle has always marketed itself, it says, as a natural restaurant or within the fast food dynasty of restaurant change, but it is still serving up the unnatural GMOs and dangerous ingredients, largely because organic is unbelievably expensive, and the organic people need to do something about this. I mean, it's too high to do, people. That said, thanks to aggressive consumer activism, Chipotle has officially announced that it will not only be labeling GMOs on the ingredients list of food products, but phasing out all GMOs on the menu. The chain has already made some steps in removing additives in dairy and other items, but the new announcement signals a major recognition of the growing movement against Monsanto and GMOs at large. Had the pleasure of telling us someone at the gas station on the way home today at Circle K about what GMOs are and what Monsanto is. He was appalled and he had almost no idea at all. Um, and this is interesting. Last thing I want to close with on here. Recently they switched their fryers from soybean oil to sunflower oil. Soybean oil is almost always made from genetically modified soybeans, that is to say toxic. While there is no commercially available GMO sunflower oil, 
So there you go. Switch to sunflower oil and fire one GMO product from Monsanto right there. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so, friends. Good night. God bless. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Nitro Pack, check out the work of Anthony Court, D. Lake, Kyle Phillips, and myself. Lots of articles, both written and video, always going up. Also, check out Resist the Tyranny. I've been doing a lot of work with them at The Media Speaks. He's awesome, especially if you are a prepper or a gun owner. Also, I want to say any money you donate to The Correct Views goes directly to a better show. I'm not out buying uh, you know, Porsches or anything. All the money you give me goes right back into the show. Um, the last thing, make sure you go to the Charity Connection. Dana Mobley Chris, someone who has been raising money for uh, cancer victims and all kinds of charities uh, for a very long time, has in fact herself lung cancer, and we have to help her beat it, guys. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless.